Um, we have 17 million people. So you can imagine the whole country would have been wiped out in the First World War. The Second World War was even worse, was more disastrous, because 50 million people died. And these, um, I beg to, to say, these are some of the prophecies the Bible talked about, the wars that would take place and the rumors of war that were coming. We talk peace today. Um, we have the United Nations. Uh, we talk peace, that there will be peace. But the peace actually eludes us because the Bible teaches that man's best efforts at peace will always fall short. It says uh, in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. The global war against terror has again rewritten the rules because we were talking about peace, that there would be no more war. But look, a kind of war, a different war altogether has come. Even if you talk peace, how would you talk peace to uh, a suicide bomber? You can see that peace cannot really be achieved today. Uh, we still have uh, increased bloodshed um, all over the world in various forms and shapes. What about uh, the famine that the Bible talks about, um, which we read in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, where it says uh, there will be famines. Uh, all over the world we hear about uh, disasters, um, uh, drought, and people have no food. Uh, there is uh, starvation, and there's always scrambling uh, for food. These are signs of Jesus coming today. Um, and Jesus said, um, Jesus talked about the famines which we have just seen. Um, we are told that this year only, uh, in this year according to uh, our scientists, they are saying that they, they think that about 57, up to 57 million people uh, will die of starvation. And 156,000 uh, uh, 156,000, going by this number, 57 million, we're talking of 156,000 people dying daily. You can see um, how the prophecies of the Bible are being fulfilled today. The world populations are exploding. I don't know, uh, 20 years ago, I was talking with the elder again. He told me 20 years ago, I can't remember the population of Uganda then, but I'm learning that today Uganda is 45 million people. Uh, in Zambia, uh, 20 years ago, we were, I think, about 8 million people. Now we are 17 million people. Um, the United Kingdom, uh, about 20 years ago, they were about, um, they were about, I think, 40, around 40 million. Today, there are 70 million people in the United Kingdom. And all of these people are scrounging uh, for um, the same resources that we used to have. So, um, you can see the, the amount of uh, farmland, how it's uh, dwindling, according to our experts, the amount of farmland available for us to farm so that we feed the world is reducing because the number of people, the population of the world is going up. So you can see how much crisis uh, that it will be as we proceed. Let us read again from the book of Luke chapter 21, verse uh, 25. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. It says, upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Um, Jesus described the growing anxiety that is caused by these disasters as upon the earth, 
distress of nations with uh, perplexity. We have uh, we talked about uh, pestilences, uh, which is in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 24, on, on how the world is under stress today. Uh, we talked about the famines. Uh, our experts uh, today struggle with so many uh, illnesses. Um, we talk about AIDS today. Malaria is causing devastation. Uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis, Ebola disease, syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, cholera. All these are uh, pestilences that trouble uh, the world today. Um, the World Health Organization predicts that AIDS death uh, would, would double uh, in the next two decades. What about pollution? We talk about pollution today. We hear of so much pollution, uh, oil spillages into the seas, um, this devastation of the forests. Uh, in Zambia, there is so much cutting down of trees to make charcoal. I don't know if that happens here, uh, but this is causing devastation to the environment and is enhancing things like drought and eventually culminating into, um, into starvation and famines. Um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 6 says, uh, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke, and the earth will grow like a, a garment, like an old, will grow old like an, a garment. Uh, I'm sure we can see that today, that the world, the way it used to be, and the way it is today, there is such a difference. Uh, if we talk to our old people, they will tell us how beautiful our country was, how natural it was uh, compared uh, to what it is today. Now our cities are polluted. There are warnings of, uh, of pollution when you go into the major cities of the world. And these, uh, this pollution is causing disease uh, amongst people. What about the water pollution? I don't know locally here, but you find places um, like this in the world. This is a river, uh, a picture that was taken from one of the rivers which passes through the city. You can see how much pollution is taking place. And this is difficult to manage and it's only destroying our earth further. You can see oils spillage into the, into the natural systems and all these things are causing destruction uh, to the earth. Again, from Matthew chapter 21, verse 25, uh, it says, um, upon the earth, distress of nations uh, with perplexity. We talk about uh, the earthquakes. There are so many earthquakes that take place today. Some people, some of you may say, no, but earthquakes have been around all along. From the time we were born, we've heard of earthquakes. Um, the amount of earthquakes that are happening today is far more than it used to be. Those days you'd hear about an earthquake, then you'd stay maybe five years or so. 10 years, that's when you hear another earthquake. Today, nearly every week, you hear of disaster. Uh, an earthquake has happened, and so many people um, have died. And the Bible talks about these earthquakes. In the same book of Matthew, uh, chapter 24, it says there will be earthquake in various places. There will be earthquakes in, in various places. And... Uh, the, our researchers say that um, about 6,000 major earthquakes happen each year. Can you imagine? 6,000 major earthquakes. How many days do we have in a year? 365. So if you divide 6,000 by 365, it will give you the number of earthquakes that happen a day. So you can see I was even downplaying that information because according to these uh, statistics, we are talking about um, about 20, if my maths saves me right, uh, per day. We don't see 
earthquakes cause destruction uh, and many people lose their lives. Um, it says that in the last 90 years alone, we've had 1.5 million fatalities as a result of, of earthquakes uh, that happen around the world. From, we read again from Luke chapter 21, verse 11, uh, which says, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. We've read that text already, and the warning is very clear uh, to us today. And from verse 25, it says, um, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars and on, on the earth distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves will roar. Uh, not long ago, we heard of the tsunamis that killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people um, in, in the eastern uh, part of the world, uh, in, in, in the far, far east. We've heard of those destructions. Uh, many people die as such things. In fact, the day that huge tsunami happened, my son, who is, uh, who is 24 years today, I think he was about uh, 12 years old, I was just reading a book for him, and it was talking about tsunamis. And I t started explaining to him what a tsunami is because he had no idea. The following day, we saw on the news a major tsunami had just engulfed uh, the Far East and killed thousands uh, of people. How, what about the moral uh, morality amongst the, uh, our, 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 our cities today? The morals have gone down. Um, people seeking their own pleasure. Uh, Luke 17 verse 28 says, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Uh, from the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 7, we read, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns have themselves up uh, to sexual immorality and perversion. Today, we see uh, these th same things happening, and for sure, destruction is coming. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about these things in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 26. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. I'm sure we understand that and we see these things today. Women exchanging their natural relations for unnatural. We talk about homosexuality today, things I, we didn't know when we were young, uh, but today they are common, and it's not just women, even men are affected, uh, as we read from the scriptures. You'll be very, I was very surprised that these things actually were written in the word of God. It reads, uh, I'll read some more, it says, um, in the same way, the men also abandoned uh, natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Can you imagine that these things actually were written long ago in the Bible that they will happen today? Don't we see these things today? They are real. We see them with our own eyes. And in fact, there is a contention today amongst other countries. Other countries want these things to be recognized, to be accepted. Others are saying, no, they are not acceptable because we are Christians. But these are the warnings uh, about uh, our Savior coming because they are written in the Bible. And whatever is written in the Bible shall come to pass. He's still talking about uh, uh, men practicing indecent acts with other men. So these are the things we see today. Um, we'll read again from uh, the book of uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 3, verse 2, uh, which says, uh, people will be lovers of money. 
Don't we see that today? It's very difficult um, for most Christians today to manage their faith, to keep their faith, and also to chase money. Most of our times, we spend it chasing money. Just when the Sabbath ends today, some people actually even think, oh, this Sabbath is taking too long because I need to go to the, what do you call a farm in Uganda? A farm. What do you call it? All right, I didn't catch it. But uh, yes, other people are, are, are saying, my house, I need to go and finish before I go to work on Monday. I must start putting the roof on my house. Other people are saying, my business, uh, I need to do one, two, three. I need to, sow, to see so and so. Others are thinking, ah, as the sun set, I need to phone this person who's supposed to pay me so many uh, thousands or millions of uh, random shillings and so forth. Uh, and it's becoming more and more abusive. Uh, what about children? They have become disobedient to their parents. These things um, are real. These things have been written uh, in the Bible and they were written for a purpose. And we need as Christians today, as believers, to open our eyes so that we see that these are real warnings that Jesus is coming again. Yes, people will be without love, will be so unforgiving, uh, will be slanderers. I stayed for many years in the UK and uh, in Zambia, people are, are, are as loving as the people I found here. I found uh, Ugandans to be very loving people in, within the short time I came here. And when I left Zambia, people were that loving. Uh, you meet people, they want to help you. When I went back after 16 years, when I went to visit Zambia, it was a different country. You want, to, you want help from someone, oh my goodness. And uh, if you step on someone's toes, they will be so rough and ruthless. Then I started scratching my head. I said, no, but this is not the Zambia I used to know because people were very kind. So these things have been written in the Bible and we can see them today with our own eyes. All we need is to read the scriptures and open our eyes. We will know that the time is near and Jesus is coming again. Uh, the Bible continues. It says, it talks about people will be treacherous, uh, rash, uh, people will be conceited lovers of pleasure rather, rather than lovers of God. Yes, we know. When I was coming um, last night from the airport, uh, I saw people dancing, people playing loud music, uh, lovers of pleasure, and uh, other than lovers of God. They have, many people today have, are lovers of a certain form of godliness and denying the power of, you know, even Christians, some of us seated here, we would rather mix, you know. Today I'm going for Sabbath worship uh, and tomorrow I sneak out for a, for a cold a glass of, of wine. And when people are dancing or going out in the nightclub, we want to be part of that again. But um, I would like to tell you today that you need to choose and you choose one only. Either you follow God or you go with the world. The two can never be mixed. And this is fulfillment of the prophecy and the warnings that the Bible is giving us today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, false prophets. Um, when I was young, I only knew very few churches around the world. But today, there are thousands and thousands of churches. And most of them, they are proclaiming that they are prophecies. They are, they are prophets. They are claiming they are giving prophet, prophecies to people. But are these prophecies real? Is that what the Bible is talking about? So we need to watch out. This is the fulfillment of prophecy. Because the only true prophecy is what is written in the Bible. Uh, that agrees with what is written in the Bible. Outside uh, what is written in the Bible, we should not take it because it's not from God. It says from the same book, chapter of Matthew, chapter 24, 
verse 23, it says, Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. That's a warning that the Bible gives us. Uh, for false Christs and false prophets who rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect. This is the time when we need to search the scriptures. This is the time when we shouldn't believe any word from anyone, but we need to read the scriptures every day for ourselves so that we know what the sure signs of, uh, that God is telling us are. If we do not read the scriptures for ourselves, anyone will come today and will tell us uh, anything and will agree. Today, the religious world is full of false teachers leading away from the, world, from the word of God. Religion has become a lucrative business for some people. It's a source of survival. And the lines between spirituality and entertainment are confused. Some music, when they play, they dance and they do all sorts of noise. And it's basically entertainment. And some Christians today, even Adventists, when you hear the word Jesus in a song, you say, ah, okay, that's the song I need to listen to. But is that the song you really need to listen to? Is the music really meant for entertainment? Or is it meant for worship and praise? Any music that you play or that you sing, if you are not praising God, if you are not worshiping God, that music is entertainment and run away from it. Because music was meant to glorify God. Outside that, we are not glorifying God. We will read again from the same chapter, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Uh, and it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. I don't know what you think, uh, whether this prophecy has been fulfilled today. I did not know that I will come to Kampala today. But here I am. Uh, God has given us a message that we should talk about it. This is the gospel that the Bible is talking about that will go to the whole world and everyone will hear this message and then the end will come. And I can tell you the Bible is sure. The Bible is certain. And every word that is written in the scriptures will come to pass. Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 says, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, and tongue, and people. This word will go out to the whole world, and every word, every nation, every tribe and kindred will hear the word, and then the end will come. But is that what you want to wait for? You want to be sure that um, everyone has heard the word? That's when you will come to God and receive salvation from him? What about if today is your last day on earth? What about when we go home today is your last? Would you still be here to see uh, when this word is preached? Because when we die, whether we believed uh, in Christ or not, or whether we received that salvation um, or not. Today, the gospel is being preached uh, by TV, by radio. Um, we have evangelistic meetings like here, all over the internet. Even today, we have people online uh, watching this message and Every day, every hour, the word of God is going out. And this is part of the fulfillment that the Bible is talking about. That Christ told us that this word will go to every nation and every kindred. And then the end will come. We 
We are living in the last days with the last great events taking place around us. Jesus compared our day to the days of Noah. The people of Noah, in the time of Noah, continued uh, in their way of life. And yet Noah preached the message that the flood was coming. But then it came to pass. As it says again in the uh, book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 37. Uh, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as it is, so, so, sorry, for as in the days before the flood, uh, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the, the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. This is a sure prophecy. So today people are marrying and giving in marriage. They are eating and drinking. They are celebrating, going to discos, enjoying themselves, um, not knowing that Jesus actually predicted uh, the last days, that people would be having a great time, but will have no time for God. They would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. As we look at the signs in the world today, we can certainly see how close we must be to the coming of Jesus. Things now are much more, are much, sorry, things now are much as they were in the time uh, Jesus came to this earth. There were signs that the Messiah, um, there were signs that the Messiah's coming was near and God even went to uh, even God even sent angels uh, and wise men to let the people know of the birth of Jesus the birth of Jesus was so cardinal such that when he came God had to send the angels um, as one preacher says God sent an heavenly choir to sing and announce the coming of Jesus because this was uh, prophecy and it was pointing to his second coming John chapter 1 verse 11 says he came unto his own and his own received him not friends let us not be like God's people back then let us be ready for his second coming he has given us all these signs which say he's coming soon. In fact, Jesus said, when you see all these things, know that it is near. Um, it's at the door. Matthew chapter 24 verse 34 says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will, no, will by no means pass away till all these things have taken place. Assuredly, Jesus is coming again. We will receive him this time, or will, he, will, you, will we receive him this time, or will he, will he be disappointed again? The hour is late, and the stakes are high. There is not a moment to lose today. A story is told about a ship uh, which was sinking and it sent out uh, signals of, uh, of distress. Another ship came in the night to rescue the people. And when they informed uh, the other ship that they should now uh, bring the, the people to the ship that was not sinking, they said, no, we cannot do it in the night. Let's wait for the morning when we can see, then we can move the people uh, to the other ship for safety. But the other ship said, no, come now, because you don't know what time this ship is going to sink. They said, no, this ship still has time. Of, of course, there's water, 
but it still has enough time to stay till morning. They kept warning, but the people refused. Within an hour, they only saw the last light going down with the people on the ship when they could have been saved. Are you like one of those people today uh, who were on that ship? And Jesus is warning us, has given us these warnings. You still want to hold on to your old ways until uh, the morning comes. That's when you change ship. My friend, it might be late because today might be your last day. Today might be my last day. So we need to be ready for the second coming uh, of Christ. To wait may result in being eternally lost. There are times you have to make a decision, and the decision is supposed to be now. The captain uh, of the ship thought that he was wise to wait, but it was too late because they never saw the morning. The ship sunk, and many people uh, were, were lost. So this is the warning today that the Lord has given us to all of us and we are asked to respond according to Jesus. How many people today would want to wait for the coming of the Lord? How many people are waiting by a show of your hand would want to wait for the coming of Jesus today? Would want to investigate their lives and to confess our sins to God today so that when he comes, he'll find us ready. I would like to invite you today to stand. All those who, in, who expect Jesus to come uh, very soon. Those who would want to examine their lives that Jesus is coming again. I want us to examine our lives because for sure these warnings are real. These warnings are sure and Jesus is coming again. Thank you. seven it may be at morn. Sun. 
we want to give glory and honor to your holy name because you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and besides thee there is no other God father indeed we have heard the warnings of your words this morning we want to pray that your Holy Spirit will write these words on our hearts that you will open our eyes to see that the prophecies and the words that are written in your holy book are true help us Lord by your Holy Spirit to take this message as an urgent message for ourselves and indeed to announce to the world that you'll be coming soon and that the time is sure we thank you and we glorify your name we pray that you be with each one with them we ask for all these things in the name of Jesus our Lord and Savior amen there's a sweet sweet seats. Uh, as the deacons and deaconesses prepare to usher us out for an interaction and then lunch, we shall make use of hymn 598, which is in line with our message today, Watch Ye Saints. But before that, let's say a word of prayer for the food and the lunch that we're going to have. Dear Lord, we thank you for you've always provided to us. We thank you for the love that you have upon us. We thank you for the spiritual food that you fed us with. And also thank you for the physical food that we're yet to have. We pray that you bless it. And to those hands that have prepared it, Lord, may you give them a lot of blessings. We ask you to also provide unto those children that do not have what to eat. In Jesus' name we pray. Watch ye saints. Watch ye saints with eyelids wake. 